and we are live. Hey everyone, it's Ultra. Uh, I'm not ready. <laughs> I asked you three I'm times, Manuel. <laughs> no, it's funny because I don't know why. Like as soon as like we went live, something inside my brain is like, "Wait, Manuel, you're not ready." I really said like I really said that to myself. Like, like why am I second guessing everything? Anyways, uh, hey everyone, we're live Ultra Podcast Z episode two fifty. We're at, we're at a quarter of a of a what do you call it, thousand. A uh, quarter of a mil. Wait, is, is it still like, yeah, M I L isn't like this is not the still the thing for yeah. Anyway, hey everyone, I'm Manuel, leader of AJ Connections, A two J Connections, and there's Josh. Say hi, Josh. Hey, what's up? Welcome everybody. Uh, everybody, just let me know in case I'm not able to see the um the feed on Twitch. So do keep me posted on all the comments, please. <laughs> I just noticed our our most recent follower is Chris is Kia tries olives. Wait, uh, is that wait no no tries Kia, to wait lives? sorry sorry Kia, tries to live. <laughs> but there's an S at the end, Manuel. Okay, okay, okay. Because I I read that wrong. With there you go, huh? There's an S at the end. Tries to lives. I still think that's to live, but they just wanted to put an S, so that maybe it's not as questionable. We all try to live sometimes, guys. Don't worry. Yes, the wind is rising. <laughs> we must try to live. We must try to live. Hey, everyone. Yeah, th this is kind of a random episode. Like, you know, we're going to wing it. Um, Josh went to Anime Impulse this weekend, which uh, is a convention I have a lot of things to say about, funny enough. But, like... The funny thing is, I didn't go to it, so it's just gonna be me critiquing it <laughs> from the outside. How'd you how'd you like Anime Impulse though? Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I think that they filled in the main uh, what's it called, Anaheim Convention Center, for what it's worth, with between the sneaker con, the K Play Fest, and uh, Anime Impulse. Um, it looked it looked pretty pretty decent. Uh, I definitely liked it more than whenever they have it like in individual buildings kind of like with Costa Mesa and with Pomona. It's really yeah. nice to just have everything like relatively together. I think the only thing that they missed out on is vendors, uh, technically with the food that they have present at the other locations, probably because it being more fairgrounds, uh, the there's like uh, the food trucks and everything. Over there, the only thing I noticed at first was just the um the main convention area where they sell food. However, when I was walking around a bit more, I did see that the um, there's like individual like outdoor areas to the con. And mm -hmm. it was there that they actually had the food vendors. I just never got around to going back to see exactly um. who was there. But um, yeah, like it's, it's definitely different since it's I'm more used to it being like if you're at Pomona, you're going to see like just food everywhere. But that's because it's sharing with the Lunar um lunar festival and then when it's over at when it was over at costa mesa then they had like this really big open spot where they had just a bunch of food vendors um so i kind of feel like everything is a bit more like synergized so there's just one area they have to go to and um it didn't look like lines or anything were pretty crazy i was pretty much just there saturday um it was good we got some interesting merch um uh, my girlfriend got uh photo cards and then we also noticed at sneaker festival not sneaker festival the sneaker expo that they actually had one of the sneakers that she was looking for um the only thing being is that they just didn't have it in her size but at the price they were selling it was like um <laughs> it was like um i want to say like 70 dollars less than what it would have been if trying to find oh really it. Yeah, okay, I, was, thought, I, I thought the... you were going to say something ridiculous. Never mind. I think we're going to go the other way. Yeah, no, it was like, um, she said they're normally 210 online, and they were like $140 there. And that was like consistent between all the other vendors on that same sneaker type. The only problem being is that they weren't in her size. But she also found some really good deals on photo cards that she purchased. She said that it was really interesting finding photo cards that like, I kid you not, like really awesome prices. And um... You're talking about like K-pop photo cards? Yeah, K-pop photo cards. Okay, uh, okay, I, I was okay. Uh, just to clarify, yeah, I, just wanted, I was like, I figured that's what you meant, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay, can I yeah, ask a question? No, it's, it's understandable. Yeah. What kind of sneakers are you buying where you're paying that much money? I feel like I buy sneakers for like oh, <laughs> I was seventy bucks most, right? forty bucks maybe. I decided. 
I decided to let that go, but yeah, because that's not as terrible as I've seen some of my friends mention before. Some of my friends spend like three hundred dollars on shoes, but it's like I don't know, man. It's um, what what happens is uh, the way that they go about it is uh, well, it was a Nike brand, but the other oh, part, exactly. that whether if it's whether if it's Nike or Adidas, um, what happens is that all of the uh, sneakers are only available for like a set. You know, I'm out of time because most of the time they're they're normally going through different um, styles of it. And so things are relatively limited most of the time. There's not really going to be like the same sneaker going year into year from like even something like Skechers or so. But what happens is, um, especially with Nike, since they always have different colors and variants, people will buy certain Nike styles or shoes um, and then they will resell them on the market later depending on their use. So there's some people that may have lightly used sneakers that they try to resell later. These are probably the type of people that actually bother to like actually clean them as thoroughly as they can. I mean, for someone like me who does um, distance running, there is no way in hell that those will like, <laughs> like those are going to be used. And like, I like buying yeah. Nike's running shoes because everything else will disintegrate. Like there's even some, um, there's even like a special type for casual runners of so let's say you're more of a metropolitan person uh, and those will be relatively cheap, like probably 30 bucks or so. Uh, they will, not, they'll just not do. They'll not, I know it's Nike, but they will not do the type of Nikes I have to pay for are about roughly uh, $70 maybe on clearance, 70, 60, give or take. But most of the time, those are not shoes that are going to be like, sold at these events because those have a very specific purpose we're talking more about like those really classic nice looking sneakers that may have variants of colors or so and those will normally go for like hundreds of dollars give or take from when they become available or they're not available the jordans are probably the best example of ones that retain their value and i know those are going to be used but like there's like there's a very specific air to jordans and so it's like people buy these to show them off and flex so that normally that's why certain jordans or shoes will like become available at times people will go and buy them and then when they buy them in their limited supply they will try to resell them later for hundreds of dollars like I've, some that are even like 300 or so it's it is in fact crazy it's not necessarily my collectible but um the shoes that my sis <laughs> the shoes that my girlfriend wanted were relatively cute and i was just kind of like you know 140 does not sound bad <laughs> by comparison to how much they were and even the photo cards when she got them from what i think was like the only booth that had cards it's funny like there were also artists alleys and stuff that also had other photo cards and stuff but like i mean there was just probably one like particular uh, group that had the photo cards. Am I moving around? It feels like I'm moving around. Is that weird? Um, <laughs> but, like, drunk. but yeah, so like, no, she found also some photo cards, relatively good prices. In fact, if I go back to um, uh, Anime Impulse, I um, we were looking for like dress up darling figures, but there were so many figures where they were being sold at a lot of different vendors where they were just like 20 bucks, like a lot of figures that easily would go for like around $45, maybe 50 or so. A lot of them were struck down to like 30, 20, 25. And it was a lot of like very similar ones. In fact, there was also a super, there's super Sonic and a rabbit Miku. Both, well, both of them were like rabbit figures, but I think it's more easy to, like visualize the rabbit Miku who has like her hair's kind of been like in a bun yeah. and everything. Yeah, like that was 20, 25 bucks. So like it, it really I think part felt... of that yeah I think part of that is just because like it's after AX and people and there's not that many big cons. I think Impulse, even though I don't like Impulse, Impulse is a biggish con. So I think that's that's probably why. That makes a lot of sense. I never thought about going there for cheap stuff. What the hell? Yeah no it's it's really interesting. Um and um like before we hadn't really like looked into it only because like I, I don't specifically have any particular um sneakers in mind that I want to get or in my girlfriend's case after ALA we were a little bit drained for cash so going to anime impulse was just kind of like hey let's go there and check it out for fun but she didn't really want to like spend a lot of time in the k-pop area because she felt that she'd be dropping like a lot of money there and so when it's just kind of like some time has passed even exo has passed a little bit of money saved up and um 
it, it was kind of like, oh, here's a place that had like some really good like deals. It's not that all of them under the sun were like in the affordable range necessarily. Um, but there was like a great deal of them, especially ones that she was missing that she was really glad to be able to pick up. And especially like a couple that were like way more expensive online than buying it right there. And I think that that like, that's really cool, but that's not the only thing that's limited. There's the, uh, K-pop stage where a lot of people were like trying to like do different choreography. Uh, they also had a different stage where they would mainly have the anime impulse related events. And that was cool if you want to get like some panels of some particular people. There was um, some comedic acts. Uh, they were also really big on the um, uh, VTubers there also. And uh, like that was pretty dope. Uh, there was also a VTuber that was announced there. I wasn't there for that particular announcement, but that was something that was like passing the rounds by the um, uh, what are they called the VIP um, section where you oh, end up God. like signing up and everything. Like that information was flying around there. Uh, because they're utilizing that fountain for um, Anaheim, if especially when it's like later in the day and the sun is kind of like causing overcast on the other side of the convention center, it becomes a really nice spot where you're able to like meet up for the cosplay gatherings. Uh, there was Star Rail, the uh, what's it called? Um, gotcha game, the things for the people who have made oh. Genshin. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Like, they had a big train thing, but behind the train thing as well was like this awesome like walk on exhibit. Like it, there was like some things there that reminded me of kind of like what AX was, um, probably like early 2010s or so, where they would have some stuff at the at the center or the uh, when you enter, and it's like oh my gosh, like this is like pretty cool. And by today's standards, it's pretty tame because going into the Anime Expo uh, Convention Center, it looks like oh my gosh, like this is extravagant. This is like a big ass celebration like look at these giant booths you know and so i just find that to be really interesting how the type of effort behind it made me feel kind of like hey there's like some really cool stuff behind this and because it's utilizing this whole convention center i think it does it a lot better than the fairgrounds do the only thing i can't take account for is what what numbers they vary it from in terms of when they had their events like at pomona regularly i know that's mixed with the um lunar festival but I, I mean, there's a part of me that just feels like, hey, uh, with the exception of the Bay Area event, why don't you just hold your like OC and might as well LA like events here? I kind of feel like it's like the way that it's synergized here. I was surprised that after they had done it last year there also that they still went to Pomona. But I'm not really sure what the case is. Well, I, think it... I think that the part of the issue is with Anime Impulse in general. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I don't like them a lot is that they have their hands in a lot of, like, you know, pots. I, I think that they're always going to be in promoters because the Asian, uh, the, sorry, the Lunar Festival thing. Mm -hmm. and, well, I think there's the Asian, there's like, two, there's like four things going on. It's not just the Lunar thing. There's like some other, like, Asian festival going on. And then there's like other stuff. But um, I don't know. Like, I wish it was just an anime con. But then again, <laughs> You seem to be the perfect. Per I mean, I guess for you, the mix worked. I find that amazing. I, I, I was literally going to start my argument, uh, and I this was my argument before I heard your explanation. Who wants to go to a sneaker expo with an anime con? But you literally didn't. <laughs> There's a well, Venn diagram it, of sneakers fans and anime fans, and Josh and his girlfriend are apparently the ones in the middle of it. And the K-pop one, yeah, and yeah. the K-pop one. <laughs> There's another. I forgot what the fourth one is, but there is another like festival that was going on the same thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm I want to find out what it is. Keep, keep keep talking, Josh. I'm gonna figure out what it was so I can be. Did you go there too? <laughs> okay. Um, what's it called? Really quick, I just want to check. How's the comment section like looking? Also, it's just me right now. It's just you yeah, guys. So nothing's going on like crazy. Oh, I do have a question though. Um, was your girlfriend gonna wear those shoes that she was gonna pay two hundred whatever for? Um, or is she I'd collecting? Say, I'd say to a relative amount. Like she wears the shoes that she buys, so um, I'm pretty sure the original goal before they became sold out was she wanted to get a, cop, a pair of them for herself, uh, and then they became unavailable. Whether or not she'd use them to like a crazy degree, like I'm pretty sure she wouldn't use them for stuff that would be super physical. But let's say to just kind of like wear out, um, you know, and regardless of the terrain, like that point i figured that it'd be like hey these are like a very nice cute looking pair of shoes that I, I mean might as well use but probably not to the extent of it's like yeah i'm gonna go run marathons or stuff like that i mean they didn't necessarily look like running shoes they look like a really nice pair of tennis shoes okay um so 
yeah, like if, she would definitely wear them, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure at that price, she wouldn't be using them for anything like super oppressive on them. Um, because she also That's likes to take care a lot of her really cute stuff. Like I, I'm all like I, I get like I honestly I get buying expensive shoes like I, I understand it mm-hmm. like maybe not sneakers like I've bought like two hundred dollar boots before and I still have like two hundred dollar boots I have I have a, I have a pair of two hundred dollar boots mm-hmm. I think they were a little more than that actually that I just haven't worn because I want to get them resold like the insole and because mm-hmm. uh, obviously that's way cheaper than fucking buying new shoes uh, I mean replacing them and they're nice and worn in so I get that but like. <laughs> I wear them and I wear the fuck out of them. But like, I never really understood the idea of like buying shoes to collect. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, it's. Uh, you want to be keeping up on chat. Delulu got chimed in saying, I'd rather buy reps. I'm assuming replicas or re- reproductions before I buy from a reseller. Lol. I mean, <laughs> that could be thing, but like, did, and this is crazy because like, I talk about like, I've talked about disc rot before, like with like, games and just in general like cartridges will die disc rot will like eat your games eventually no matter what you do i mean at some point it will but did you know that sneakers will will disintegrate on their own i didn't know that apparently and i don't know somebody's gonna correct so there's gonna be if if maybe a sneaker head will watch this and correct me totally but like apparently you have to wear them to some degree you have to like put your you have to like you know wiggle them around and get them moving because if you just leave them the um, the, the softer parts will mm-hmm. just slowly dissolve and like you can just like i mean as long as you don't touch them they'll still be there but if you pick up a pair of like maybe like 90s like jordans you mm-hmm. pick them up and you like squish them you could probably squish the shoe together <laughs> oh yeah it's something about like they have to be worn to some degree but i'm like i just like imagine spending that much money on shit and their shoes i don't know like i, I just uh, feel like that's a that's an extension of like feet fetishism i don't understand and not to say anything's wrong with that i'm just saying that to me that's always what i, fig- I figured it i th- i think it's just simply it's like people like people will find whatever they believe is like art or what they enjoy especially when it's like hey sh- uh comics games shoes they're all <laughs> They're, they're meant to be to an extent like comics would be given to kids it's like oh these are graphic novels now i mean like it's a superman's action comics number one is literally just meant to have been held on by a kid to like read and get destroyed there was like i believe no real intention for something like that to go for as much money as it would later and it's only because well it it's like limited circulation. It wasn't seen as something that was going to be worth a lot. And now it's like, hey, this is like a really interesting piece of cult, pop culture that the people that kept, you know, for alive as they, uh, like in good enough condition for when it would sell for millions, that everybody would be like, oh, this is cool. So like that would affect other things that would have limited value. I mean, I didn't think too much about games that might have been a limited supply sold at like, blockbusters that later end up becoming like very expensive pieces of um you know video game history to get your hands on but like at the same time it's kind of like yeah well those all those the cartridges or the discs like they'll also disintegrate and erode over time and then same thing with the shoes it's like most people would probably think i'm going to use the shoes for like a specific purpose and then every new line we're just going to make something else not keep the exact same kind of shoe available and so because you have these limited supplies that some people might have like an interest in over time that's what will drive those prices to go up and you know that becomes something where it's kind of like a mix between the people who will be like i collect anything because anything at a certain time could become like valuable and then you have the people that are willing to try and find those things because they're like i want this piece of art i want to have like this like for display maybe not for its initial intentions but just kind of like check out my like collection of things where like you know people like to use those things for like maybe background setups or probably prior it's just to have like a man cave that has these things you know it, like, it, it's just maybe, people <laughs> maybe somebody wants to have a whole ellis in wonderland thing behind their shoulder i mean i don't think anyone yeah. can, i don't think anyone can, i don't think I anyone am, can see it yeah there you not, go. See like, until he i'm up. not planning on selling <laughs> any of this i still have original <laughs> packaging for some stuff but like you gotta believe like i i got this because it's like this is this is my 
enjoyment. Like I like having uh, yeah. this out there. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen. Sorry, I, it just it just drew my attention once I saw the giant Alice. I'm like, wait a minute, that's Alice. In, that's like a lot of Alice in Wonderland going on up there. Yeah, like reminds me the, of the really. <laughs> The really big one over there is, um, I think when I originally got it, it was at around two hundred dollars. On um, it's two hundred dollars pre-order off of Amazon because uh, Brave Armory does a lot of Disney stuff. So there were only going to be three thousand of that model in circulation, and they all come oh my with God. a certificate of authenticity. And you better believe there were fuckers out there who bought maybe like three of those or so or like more if they want oh, to yeah. the only intention being is that they're gonna keep them in storage wait a little bit and then afterwards they're gonna like go out to a disney event or just put it on ebay or somewhere double that thing's price but the more time that goes you'll even go up for higher um, yeah. one of the things one of the things that i bought that was higher than anticipated let me see if i'm able to move this up slightly Okay, so like up there, another Alice. There's <laughs> even more up there. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so like up here, there's this thing right here that has both the um, Alice and the Queen of Hearts, and it's in a display case that I'm not removing them from just because I think they look good like that. <laughs> Otherwise, you better believe I just have them standing out, exposed to like the dust or whatever, because I'm not planning on reselling. But anyway, yeah. I think they look nice right there, and this thing right here cost me about 250 when originally they were sold at the Disney store when when they were available at the Disney store um they were at around um 120 130 it actually still has the price actually on the packaging because the person who bought it I bought it from had the original packaging also from it and um yeah the the I find that on sets sold with like other people there's like it was a four there's four of them from like Beauty and the Beast I think one was Herc and um, Meg Megara, and then I, uh, the Beauty and the Beast one wasn't Beauty and the Beast. That one was actually Gaston and Belle. And then <laughs> I, I, I forget... think that's your girlfriend in the chat calling you a nerd. Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna wait for him to take a break. I, but... I am, I am a nerd. I'm just a nerd. And um, the, I think the other one was supposed to be Aurora and Maleficent, but like uh... all, the, all of those, um, people try to sell them in multi things together, and they will normally sell them for around two grand, or they'll sell oh them for like sixteen hundred or something like that. So, um, technically, the only thing that I have in my collection that's probably the best in resale value is only going to be. Um, well, those guys up there, I can't really turn the thing as much. But then the rest of the stuff here is all just a bunch of anime-related stuff. And all of this, I just kind of waited for them to kind of, like, drop where I found them at, like, okay prices. And some of the stuff here, I'm just going to also admit, is counterfeit. Rather, it was something that I had been <laughs> trying to find. But, like, it, it wasn't intentional. There's, like, two things I have here that I know are counterfeit that I didn't try to collect that way. Uh, what happened was I was trying to get a um, Ram who's doing the Queen of Hearts to go with the Ram that's Alice. The Ram that I have of Alice uh -huh. is real, but the Ram is not. I bought it two different times. One time was like 13 bucks off of Wish and I didn't expect much. It came in, I just thought, yeah, that's what I thought. It's, it's a counterfeit. But then there was one that was available on Amazon for 30 and I thought like, you know what? I you know, I feel like having the actual one because the counterfeit one looks like shit. And then it comes in, lo and behold, it's also a counterfeit. I was like, what? Like, it oh looked like it was mutable and everything. Um, but yeah, no, the like, I think you could kind of see her. She's like right there. I'm not sure what my video display is right now on the... Um, she's counterfeit? On this, yeah, no, she's a, she's a counterfeit. You can tell the, the paint job is incorrect. The plastic around it, 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 very notably by like the legs, but even the skirt area and stuff for the outfit, uh, it, it's very much not good. However, there was one I got that I was not going to give two shits about if it was going to be counterfeit or if it was not going to be, if it was going to be real. And I actually don't know if it's a counterfeit or if it's real. I bought it off of Wish for forty dollars and this it's is part of it. Of it. <laughs> no but the crazy thing is i can tell ram is a counterfeit this other one i'm gonna see if it falls kind of into view or not but there's this one back here that has kind of like a portrait frame not not the alice right there i'm trying to point invertedly there's like a picture frame with like a t-set thing over oh yeah, here. I yeah i see it okay so 
that one is the mythos white rabbit which is like a white rabbit girl and she's around a lunar staircase with like a, a weird like door thing right there and it looks beautiful it's stunning it is if it is counterfeit it is the best looking counterfeit i have ever seen of anything i've gotten counterfeit figures and stuff before at times where i even expected it this one just looks so good the paint looks really nice the anime like eye display and everything on there like everything does not look bad it does not look like a counterfeit what's funny though is the alice that's like kind of right here with like the the legs with like the um the striped socks and yeah. like kind of like is holding up the um the skirt area and all that uh that one is hella counterfeit but it's also I look see. it it looks okay but it's very notably counterfeit and based on what like these mytho lines and stuff i would not like that's not even a mythos line but like based on if the original is out there the mythos lines one let me just say those go for 300 300 there's an uh. alice mythos one that goes for around 700 the cheapest i've ever seen it drop to you is 500 and there's i a, there was a line of grim fairy tale figures that i got a long yeah. time ago like mm -hmm. 20 years ago i don't know if yeah. you've ever seen them and it was like they were kind of like <sighs> there was red riding hood there was a wolf there was uh, alice in wonderland and so on and like the the yeah. wait they were kind of scary looking i think todd mm -hmm. mcfarlane had some hand in it or mcfarlane toys definitely did and uh like 20 years ago, so it's like old ass stuff from like when I was in high school. And mm -hmm. I kept the Red Riding Hood and the Wolf one because I just, I, I like, I like that. But I, I sold the fucking Alice in Wonderland ones to book off. I think they gave mm -hmm. me like 12 bucks for them. What? And when they put them on the shelf, yeah, okay, you already know where this is going. And when they put them on the shelves, <laughs> they were like, they put them for like 150 or something like that. <laughs> that, that is. <laughs> horrible it makes me want to not even go to book off for their shit yeah like that's disgusting that's a terrible ripoff i'm not i'm not i'm not saying this on your end because every one that you sell anything to that has like a store it feels like i believe they want to intentionally rip you off like they'll but always that was an insane like, that was an insane one that's that's insane. Like, marco oh, that's okay. crazy on some level they do did, did have to look? they do have to make a profit on what they pay you plus the time to stock it and everything and how long it's going to sit on the shelf. That thing might make money, but it might sit there for years, which takes up shelf yeah, space from so, other things. But like, uh, but 150 is crazy. Yeah, like, that is still I've gone to a like ridiculous jungle. Market. Yeah, no, I've, I've gone to jungle for them to like, like I go down there because I tell them like, hey, I have figures, I'm thinking maybe I can sell them. I tell them they're used, open. So they'll normally tell me like, whatever price you find them online, Think of yourself as getting that at around a markdown to about like 10% or so. So if I were to say sell like a figure for like, if there's a figure and it was 40 bucks there, they'd essentially be like, you're probably looking at around $10 because we're probably going to mm -hmm. try to sell it around that price or maybe even a little higher. But that's where they try to say like, well, you know, essentially you're getting it for like definitely less than what was purchased. And even then, unless if it was one that was like, maybe was going to say like, let's say it actually went up to about $70 or so. Then maybe at most you're going to look at maybe $20 or something. And that's not counting. if like, maybe they decide like, yeah, we're going to sell it for like 80 because it's right there, but 150 off of $12. Yeah. That's, uh, that, yeah. that's it, like, it was that was funny so because when I went hearing about that, because like, like I said, I, I, and if anyone's wondering, I, it was during a period where like I had to get rid of boxes and boxes of things and some stuff I did keep, some stuff I kept and then I just opened it and kept it. Some stuff mm -hmm. I kept to sell like more carefully. And but other I things you just threw out in the trash. Oh yeah. There was a lot I threw out of the trash. Like no, there was stuff that book off wouldn't take and that yeah. I didn't want to do anything with. And 90, actually not even 90%, like a hundred percent of that stuff I just threw away. Uh, I mean, like, it, it was kind of, okay, before anyone judges me on that, this was kind of a, how do I put it nicely? This was like, this this wasn't fun. It wasn't like I was having a good time doing this. It was kind of traumatic, but it had to be I, done. Yeah, but, I, it's it's like, <laughs> if you have clutter, and there's only yeah. so much clutter that you can, like, I have times where, like, there are certain things where it's like, let's say if there was some clothing I had gotten, but, like, let's say after about a year, and I only wore this set clothing, like, 
X amount of time and it's just kind of sitting there, I kind of feel like, well, I feel stupid that I bought this particular like clothing. I like to say that I don't feel as bad because a lot of times I like to try to buy things on clearance, especially if I go to like anywhere, but it doesn't make it feel any less good. And I've also had situations where like, um, let's be it cosplay or something like that. Like eventually there are some things that like just end up having to go away or you don't have the interest of. And like, sometimes you'll maybe get some money back for it. And then other times it's kind of like, yeah, that was kind of a loss. I, I think that's just more of a problem with how over consumption is like an overall mm -hmm. problem. But I mean, yeah, they, it, it depends uh, because I had, I had a friend who, um, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That, I was just gonna, I was just gonna finish before you go. I had a friend who, um, before they left Bakersfield, they in they got like a mental minimalism mentality. Oh, so they actually started feeling way better the way less stuff they had. I mean, when they moved, I'm pretty sure everybody who like doesn't have a lot of shit and just feels like they want to move without having to get like a U-Haul will probably feel great. But mm -hmm. um, or at least anything that you can't take in more than your car. But I, I think it's different because there might be some people who um, genuinely feel that like having the excess is maybe like not as good or has that return on happiness or investment that they would have thought. So like just the act of minimalizing, um, a, it feels good potentially i can see that from where if it, things are kind of like cluttery um but it, but it's a mix it's either kind of like it's there's something about trying to regain space from the oh, yeah. uh, over like like just just saying the over consumption of things especially because it feels like we're all just promoted to consume and stuff like that hit with a fomo and, and then later it's just kind of like hey i regained some space makes me feel makes me feel better or so yeah, I, 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 when I was young, and it's funny, I, didn't, I don't think I ever realized it. When I was young, I was like a mad collector of figures <laughs> and like bought everything and then kept them all for like years in a storage. Then I had to get rid of the storage. It was either like become a hoarder with boxes all over the place or get mm -hmm. rid of it all. And honestly, if, if, it felt good getting rid of it all because like I mentioned it, I've mentioned it. <laughs> it's funny because I, before telling the stories of me getting rid of it all, yeah, I used to have stories for years on other podcasts or whatever you might remember them if anyone ever watched. But I used to have stories where I used to go on about like, oh, it's in storage somewhere. I think it's in storage, and it was like this monkey on my back for like a like over a decade, where it was mm -hmm. all like, man, I wish it. And then I was paying for the storage. I'm pretty sure whatever money was like was like, well, how do I put this? Whatever money I probably like, I, I cut my losses. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all the money that those things were worth was long wasted on the storage prices. And then look, after that happened, you don't worry about those storage prices anymore. It's exactly. A, it's 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 kind of rough, but I think that it's really easy to fall into those particular um scenarios and it can happen to anybody. <laughs> like um I and don't be a hoarder. Like, don't be a hoarder. This is it, fine. There's a fine line in my opinion. There's a fine, fine, fine line between being a collector and a hoarder. Like I don't I think, think it's that. I don't think either of us are that crazy. Like, there's an alternate universe. There's like an MCU manual where he brought the stuff back home instead of selling it all, and then he became a hoarder. There's a there's the opposite universe side of me where, um, because I think I could agree. Like, there were some times where I was just collecting any figures, and if there's one thing I wish I would have done better, if I can go back, is I would say, don't don't just like get things because it seems fun to do so in that moment i would say that for gaining the majority of your like um enjoyment out of something like that is to do it based on um very specifically the things that you feel you have the most love for because otherwise it does feel like it's spending blindly and the other part is that uh when you like put everything together to like say you like themize it or something then you're able to like have it all together in like a really nice theme i think the best example i've seen of it is um a friend of um well no um friend weeaboo wonderland their husband uh what's it called uh has a sister that lives nearby to where she lives by Mm -hmm. And um, when I went down to visit during a concert, after a concert, we went to go get 
in and out and then her husband's sister invite us over to go to their place and i have never seen a more we decked out place but let me get to it it's not like my type of weave these people like middle age like looking shit so their living room is like a fucking king's like den area oh, it looks oh, so middle ages okay I, think yeah, you meant middle looked, age. I was confused for a second yeah okay. i thought you meant like yeah, it looks very yeah I think it was specified. like it doesn't look like it doesn't look like clutter it looks very much like oh my gosh like this was this this felt like it had a plan and it even blended well with their kitchen area which did have some random anime stuff here and there they had like some figures around but it didn't look like anything that um that like didn't go together and then the upstairs because there's like a three-story building but it's like trying to utilize space uh vertically and um there's a the upstairs area looked very fairy lore like it looked like a cozy ghibli like thing yeah. and that's why i feel that when you know exactly what the things are that you genuinely love versus just saying like i'm a fan of all these different series but like buckling down and being like no like this is very specifically like a thing that i like and it looks it genuinely looks like the type of thing that this person and their husband like they were like on lock with it. And like the only thing I didn't see completed was the restroom, but the restroom they were gonna make look like <laughs> this big like aquamarine stuff type thing. Like there's a there was a um, you know those like old like submarine hats that have like the little caged like looking face yeah, thing. Yeah, the old oh, diving yeah, suits. It looked so out of place and not it looked not out of place. It looked so perfect and like not a disturbance for how big something like that would look right there. And um, that, that's what I'm just trying to say is like, if there's the type of thing where I can go back and just be like, hey, like there's the Alice stuff, but that's just after I oh. got specific on looking yeah. for the Alice stuff. But like, what if I was like, you know what, stick to the, stick to the persona, like look very much into just the specific persona things that you enjoy that you can afford reasonably and go from there. Um, yeah. And like, it, it helps so that the theme and everything looks really great. Um, but it just sucks because a lot of stuff out there is very FOMO related. Video games probably took the worst hit during the pandemic because it felt like, oh, hey, like everybody wants video games now. And suddenly certain volumes of video games or any collectibles, especially after the whole Pokemon thing went down, that everybody was like, yeah, we want to just like collect everything. But the problem is, is that generally when it comes to collecting and getting things, you literally invite people that feel so miserable about what they are doing that it just ruins everything for everyone. Like I, when the Pokemon cards became very popular because of what Logan Paul had done, it, I can't tell you how many lines of people I would see at Target and stuff. People that you could just tell for a fact don't really collect or do anything with Pokemon cards. And yet just because that happened, they're all like, yeah, I want to like collect these Pokemon cards and all that stuff. Um, and then we get to situations where if you have no love for it, you have an excess for it, you don't know how to necessarily sell or properly get rid of it. And then you're going to be stuck with a situation where you just have an abundance of stuff. And then you might have to get rid of even the storage set, uh, like set that you have for it. Um, and so like, that's the one thing I'd probably tell myself going back there is just kind of like, Hey, probably feel more like narrow the view on specifically the things that you really enjoy, because I mean, like there, there, it's a vast world of things that are like just out there, and I know that we like to like show off or like enjoy certain things, but at the same time, it's kind of like, to, like I have video games. I'm gonna eventually get through some that I haven't even played before, but I can't play through all the video games. And I just have them sitting there, and I haven't really bought anything since um, Persona Three Reload. But I had some other things prior to that, so I'm trying to do my best so that way I could get through that instead of feeling like, hey, next game's coming out, like. I really have stuff to do so that way I can like eventually get to metaphor and I don't feel metaphor is not going to sell pretty. I'm not going to fear that metaphor was sell poorly, but with what I'll get through, maybe by the time I get to metaphor, it'll probably be like 20 bucks or something. <laughs> if I went back, I'd be like, don't buy all these figures, go invest in Apple stock. <laughs> go invest in Apple stock, go invest in, um, uh, in Bitcoin, and then just let it sit until a very specific time. 
Yeah. Um, and don't forget, don't forget your password to the. It, it's funny. The thing it's funny because that, the news oh, is all yeah. over that one guy. He was like, oh, the guy who threw have... out his. He's gonna be a billionaire, but he threw out his. Yeah, he, disc, he, he, he yes. get to his, Yeah. That, that's oh, ridiculous. Man. Oh. What's funny is I think, mind you, I held on to it for like an hour. I remember like. I think well, okay, it wasn't. It also wasn't mine. I think for like a college project, my then girlfriend, my then like fiance girlfriend, was doing like gosh, like fifteen years ago. She mm-hmm. bought a bitcoin. Fifteen thousand. You know, actually, I, should, I shouldn't even say buy a bitcoin. She bought several bitcoins because they they were like worthless back then. Mm-hmm. She brought she bought several bitcoins for like some pro, some college project and like spent them. And I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't want to bring it back. I'm like, did did you keep them all? Like we obviously broke it up, but I'm like, dude. She had like several, like I don't remember, like it, it probably wasn't more than a couple because I remember, like even back then, it was still like, oh, a Bitcoin's worth like I think the Bitcoin was I'm not joking was worth like ten dollars or something weird like that. Wow. So, and now I'm like, man, imagine how rich we'd be or I'd be because I, I would have kept the hard drive. <laughs> like, why? You remember your password you ever used? Isn't that like? Wouldn't that be funny if you just told me something? <laughs> A uh, fun yeah. fact sim- similarly, wait. huh? What oh, you say, no. GD? Uh, I was just gonna make an old joke about you, Manuel, saying, Wait, wasn't your college thesis having to defend to Socrates that the bird that you oh, plucked the feathers up. off was definitely a man by his definition? <laughs> shut up. It's funny because right before the pandemic happened, I had bought a bunch of Pokemon card sets, like yeah. from Target, like just $20 sets. I think one was Sun and Moon. Uh, actually, I think they were all like sun and moonish related because this is like right before Sword and Shield come out came out, mm-hmm. and um, so it might have been more like 2018, but still it's right for the pandemic. And I was gonna do a video on it because like I for somehow I, somebody had sold me like their their Pokemon card collection like their old ones like really cheap, and like he's like 20 bucks you have like boxes of cards and I'm sure they were all worth this because they, they, they were actually played with and whatever. But I was like, how cool would, cool would it be if I did a video for A to J where I like I don't know shit about Pokemon cards after except for playing them like when I was like a literal child that I'm gonna open all these. I never opened them. The box or the fucking one that I bought from Target. And it's funny, he's actually returned one of them from Target because it was still close enough. I'm like, I must well get my money back. But the other ones I kept during the pandemic, like I was able to like, I think I I was just gonna give one to a friend because i really needed money like i was super broke and a friend of mine's like bro this is worth like 300 dollars." <laughs> and i'm like i bought it for 20 <laughs> like i was gonna like i thought i was gonna get 10 for it now <laughs> i think the dude gave me 100 for it and he he he, he opened it or some shit but yeah. <laughs> but i had all these like i had a couple other i still have a couple I still have a couple boxes. I should I should like sell and pay off JD. I was about to say you have that and you've been <laughs> complaining about money manual. Well, I've always been trying to sell. Okay, it's always the, to, this is the one thing I, I will give it up to places like Book Off. They give you the money now, but jo- I mean jo- JD did have a good point. There were some things, especially especially once the things get to bigger tickets, like. I could probably sell like you know some of my games, some of my pro- my products that are worth like you know twenty to fifty bucks. Those will move kind of quickly. Once you start talking several hundred, the amount of people who will buy that stuff becomes a lot more limited. There's stuff that I've been sitting on for years that like, and like every so often, like when something like one of like actually nothing's really sold. But every so often, when it looks like something's gonna sell, like just buy the fucking thing. I've been like. Ho- this thing's been listed forever. And like I kinda know if I lower it a little, like it'll probably sell, but then like then that next person will make the money. And I probably should just get over that and just like sell my shit, just get rid of it and pay off JD. So shut the uh, fuck up. <laughs> but uh, Murphy's law of like no matter where you bought something, someone got it cheaper. And in this case, it's like no matter where you sold something, someone sold it for more. <laughs> Well, my issue is, and at the end of the day, I probably shouldn't care about this, but my issue is, like, I wish I could I could be like, only buy this if it's for you. I don't want to sell to resellers. That's my issue. And if I, like, and I know that's exactly what I did to book off, but, like, um, I don't want to, I don't want to sell the shit, then, like, it just ends up on eBay as, as a new listing. So, yeah. So it's uh I, I do get where that's coming from. It's it's the type of thing that's always kind of rough. It's like you always want to sell it when it's either 
at a good point or you sell it to like the right person who's like not gonna like turn around and then be like yeah i i was just waiting for like the right moment to snatch up because i know like the resellers like they genuinely suck the resellers are why um uh what's it called whether it be the comic book writers uh, artists um voice actors or um uh any any person with celebrity when they sign something oh there's going to be those people that are going to like want to sell it for more so that makes people that are like hey if i'm going to like get my autograph onto something but that person's just going to turn around and sell it i might as well make like my money I on know. it and then there's <laughs> people <laughs> like there's people like <laughs> um uh, David Grohl, and I do apologize for, like, interrupting, I just want to finish up, but, like, David Grohl has literally been seen, like, at, um, kind of at concerts and stuff, and there's, like, probably people that are lined up who are gonna be, like, hey, sign my one thing and all that, and he's literally, like, hey, um, I'm not saying anything, uh, I only do that if it's specifically going to charity, or it's, like, make a wish thing, you know, like, he's, like, and he's specifically been caught, like, outside, like, you know, when he's, like, about to, like, travel out with, like, the rest of the band as they're leaving the venue. And he's just generally, like, I, I don't sign anything anymore. I just know because... Uh, I have weird mixed <laughs> feelings on that. Like, I get it. But then I also don't. I don't know. Like, Dude, I mean, maybe... I... The... <laughs> no, maybe it, it'll change if I suddenly got, like, famous tomorrow. But if somebody wanted my autograph... And believe it or not, it has happened a couple weird times in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I would for sure just sign that shit for free. And like, I would not ask questions. I would not ask for money. I would not ask for anything, you know, like weird. I'd be like, or I wouldn't make a big deal about it. I'd be like, I would make a big deal about it, but not, not, not in that way. I'd be like, fuck yeah, I'll sign that. You know, like. Um, oh, uh, I think it just, it, it really depends on the intention. What was that, JD? Oh, yeah, I was going to add in something. There was uh, something a few weeks back. I think it was a voice actor talking about how people were ambushing them at the airport to get autographs. Like, as they were coming back in, flying back in, it's like, mm. really, you think I'm going to sign something at the airport? And you're just lining up here hoping to get, like, a free autograph. Some people are to just... To be fair, I mean, I, I don't want to say to be fair, because uh, I, I think that is stupid for the record. Mm -hmm. But... Fandoms have been doing airport shit for a while. That always strikes me as weird. Like being a member of the idol fandom for years, like as in like the oh. J-pop idol fandom, but the K-pop <laughs> one is crazy too. I want to like, share a story what? that my girlfriend told me if it's okay if I could share a story about ridiculous stuff that people will do even at the airport and then the sweet retribution that my girlfriend delivered. Like, no, hold on. Cool. Before, like, before you tell that story, before you tell that story, you can go ahead, you can go ahead and share it, but I want to point out that yeah. your girlfriend's like, bro is going to end up signing a marriage certificate. That's going to be me like, fuck yeah, I'll sign it. Like, you're married to <laughs> okay, me. I'm not charging for that signature. If that's what we're talking it's like about. you're married to me. I, like, I, I oh, shit. paying for that signature to no, the no. state of most me, in California. It's about but... me. Like, uh -huh. I'm gonna... Yeah, she's talking about <laughs> manual. It, 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 it's a real fast thing. This, before Josh, I mean, before Josh tells the story, just my... my there have been a few times mainly working with movies that like i just been like am amongst a ton of people where they're like oh can you like you see this autograph from everyone one time i worked like as like an assistant editor of this fucking movie and like this dude was getting autographs from all the cast and crew that were at like this premiere thing and like my my bitch ass <laughs> i signed in a prime location like right by the thing big <laughs> And it wasn't until afterwards that my friends were like, Manuel, what the hell? Like, like, why'd you sign so big? And I, I did not even occur to me. I just got to my head that somebody was asking for my autograph. I was, I was really young, by the way. But yeah, I got to my head that I was like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then the way I would sign back then, you, there's no way you, you would know my name was Manuel anything. Like, you couldn't read it. It was just like a scribble. It was just a giant big scribble, like, right <laughs> where you would want the star to sign it or the director. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, everyone, someone's collectible. Go ahead and tell your story. <laughs> oh, oh wait, wait, it's back at Mina. Yeah, it's back. Yeah. At oh, it would only be if my girlfriend's okay with me sharing the story. Oh, so that's why I tried saying like, if it's okay, if I can share a story about something that happened in an airport, and then later something where my girlfriend was able to witness sweet retribution. Wait, to, was she? Uh, uh, does she K-pop stalk someone? Because you mentioned K-pop fandoms and. Uh, I wasn't oh, implying her, yeah, no, it's, but it's I, very I just, much related to K-pop. Yeah, I wasn't implying her, but like, uh, 
like I, like I mentioned, like that there have been times, especially like for example, a really good example is like um like when there's a guest that like I really wanted to see at a con. Mm-hmm. Like I remember when like Morning Musume came to Anime Expo like in 2009, and when mm-hmm. Momo or Clover Z came in 2014 or 15, whatever year that was. Um, like I, I I had a lot of friends who were like hardcore into their fandoms, and I was in groups where people were like, "Hey, let's meet up for dinner, blah blah blah. Let's meet up like the safety places in line, blah blah blah." And in these chats, they'd be like, "Who's going to the airport?" And like a whole mass of people would go to the airport, wait. And then just like suddenly the group chat would wake up because they, there'd be all these videos and pictures of them just walking across. And it'd be like, that's weird, right? <laughs> yeah, and you have to pay to get in the airport. Did they just buy like cheap tickets or something? I don't know. I have no idea. But it was just like, what the hell? And there's a lot of, and like that happens a lot. Because, and it's just like. No, sorry, I was going to say, because I doubt anyone would let you into the terminal at LAX without a ticket. No, oh, well, a uh, ticket or well, you, you, you can get to a... the, you might get to the front part of it because I have met people there for food sometimes, like when they're leaving. But I, I don't know how the terminals have been like in years. I haven't been on a flight since. I haven't been on a notable. I haven't been on a flight where I've paid attention to the terminals since. Um, and also the international terminal is different. I, I, that's probably the biggest thing of it all. I think the little terminals you can't get like past the front door <laughs> unless you have a ticket. Um, but yeah, like. Anyway, I just I just think that's uh that's odd. I swear I'm not a weird airport stalker. Are you sure? <laughs> but yeah, airport stalkers are the are, are like kind of the kind of the worst. Well, I wouldn't say they're the worst because they're definitely our worst fans. But uh, it's up there. It's up there. And I find it weird that that's extended to like so many other fandoms. Like, I don't know. And it's funny because usually when you stalk the idly types, you're not asking for their autograph. You're just being creepy and you just want like a, a video or like a wave or like get them to acknowledge you for a second. I can't imagine ambushing them expecting an autograph. That, that's a, that's another story, I guess. I don't. Know. I just realized that the poster behind Josh on my right is also an Alice in Wonderland poster. It's yeah, it's Alice in Wonderland. Time. I, I had a lot of his it. others. The stuff directly behind him is a bunch of Final Fantasy X stuff, as if he ripped it yeah. all out of a like a magazine or something. Uh, that one actually got from a um. This one actually got from a uh, comic book shop in town. They were selling it for ten bucks. Oh, it's a it's a big poster. Yeah, no, it's got um like. Oh, I thought it was pages. Case. I thought it was pages from like a book. Same. Yeah, I thought no, it was it's, like it's pretty big. Yeah, no, there's like a lot in my room where it's just like a bunch of random stuff, both real like the only things that i have caught up have been like um some calendars and stuff that i've gotten before that i've like i've used them afterwards to like add to certain things in the room but it really depends like um a lot of things i've gotten at events just kind of like over time or maybe i got lucky and i like found them somewhere um in some cases i might have like won some stuff like i have a poster from uh what's it called Cassandra Lee Morris with regards oh. to the um what's it called? Sword Online. She was doing a little giveaway on Instagram and I actually won that. Oh what the hell? I've never won any of that shit. I hate you. <laughs> I want to <laughs> win a contest. Um but yeah, no, it's uh it, it depends. It's like a but yeah, that's what I mean. Like there's still like a lot of shit here where I was just collecting over time. In fact, my room wasn't really filled with a bunch of posters. I had posters in one area that I was gonna use for like videos and then later i just kind of felt like hey let me just use excuse me every poster that i've ever actually gotten and then that filled up like half the room and then i was like i wonder if i could find posters on the other half so then as i kept on going to events i just got those particular posters and i just kind of plastered them like everywhere and then certain things i even got from like friends and stuff like that so it's um it that's why i was saying I love it. It's chaotic. It's overstimulating. Uh, but then sometimes I feel like it would have been better if it was centralized to something. Right now, the vibe is just that it's a weeby vibe. It's a weeby um, vibe. <laughs> um, half anime, half like Disney adult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, like for sure. Um, yeah, no, I do. I do find that it's interesting, especially going off of anime impulse. It's like, it's just funny because I believe it's all tied together by like the funniest things. It's like certain vendors were selling a lot of stuff that they probably hoped that they could have sold like right when the summer started with stuff like fan yeah. 
Comic Con, um, Anime Expo, and then it's just kind of like, yeah, we're reaching like the end of summer, and like new stuff is always coming exactly. out that they want to like be stocked up for. So it's like, might as well just bite the bullet on it. And then there's like the sneaker festival. Like the tickets were only like forty dollars a piece for like the whole weekend. But oh, yeah, like, there's, like, there's probably but there people was no who, like, single day tickets. Yeah, the, that's the, the the whole weekend for two days was at forty, and like. I feel like you did get some good entertainment. I think probably I didn't get to see them, but like anime wise, I mean, you had um, Lotus Juice as a guest. Like that, that's pretty fucking dope. Oh, but, oh, oh yeah, and um, what's it called? The um, I'm trying to think of like the sneaker place. Like, dude, it's not like they they didn't do anything extra. They had a um, they had a whole like like I said, a, a basketball court in there. Like it looked really dope um which actually goes really good with their theming but i think the other thing is that you're seeing people there are not necessarily selling the shoes at like a complete loss i think the same way that my girlfriend found that there were some shoes sold for like 70 less they probably cut the prices to encourage people that are like coming down for the event to also like hey like let's see if we can do some sales i might be you know, also kind of buying a little bit of a bullet and selling it for cheaper than what they would find online. But then what this does is this generates a lot more interest to come down in the future. And hey, like in some shape or form, if you don't make a sale, you probably just pay for a um, exhibit spot and you're not going to get anything if you just like are there, like not wanting to like compromise on the fact that like, hey, this isn't an easy place where a lot of people can come to get some stuff. I mean, that same spot where my girlfriend got the photo cards, I kid you not, it looked like it was the only main thing that had a bunch of like photo cards outside of going to the um, artist alley areas that would vary because they had different, like vast amounts of different things, but they were also separated based on like what you were more a part of. So, um, you know, like it's just really interesting because I feel that in terms of collecting, not everything is always going to be like very much a doomer scenario. I feel like there are some people that know that they can part with some things, whether it's a business thing or if they kind of feel like, hey, this is probably the best venue that I have. So that way I can like yeah. get rid of some things or build. And I feel that between the three different items that they have there, I think that they synergize the area like really well. They didn't use anything extra like when it's BlizzCon or WonderCon where you'll probably have like an additional like, because they use part of the Sheraton or the Hilton Hotel that's connected via a bridge. Uh, they didn't really do that at this con, but I still feel like for what they use the convention center for, they, they knew what they were doing. And um, who knows, maybe over time when it builds, they'll have access to those other things depending on how it goes, but this is just the OC. I know that they, for the OC, they know that they have this location. I like it way more than when they held it at Costa Mesa. Josh? My issue with them, huh? I, I just had a quick question of clarification. Uh, yeah. When you talked about them having a basketball court, do you mean that they just set up the shoes sales on a basketball court, or could you actually play basketball there? You you could play basketball. It didn't look like it was a whole free-for-all for it, but, like, I mean, it was a like whole-ass <laughs> big, like, basketball court, everything. Like, even the... the um. They had like a hard wood, hard wood floor, like set up wow. the same way that it is like at like a stadium or something. Like it, it looked pretty legit. It was pretty cool. Okay. Oh, also real fast before I keep forgetting, and just so we don't have to like make a note for it later, the fourth event was Collectors Expo, which I guess mm. just mainly has it's a line to have like Pokemon cards and Hot Wheels, like toys, like toys and cards. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the fourth. And it, honestly, you could just mix that in with the anime stuff, and I probably wouldn't notice that that, that was supposed to be a fourth convention. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like Leslie was complaining that there, because I guess she wanted to go. She was complaining that there was no single day tickets, and apparently, like some other friends of mine were messaging because like Oshi Live was there, and they were trying to find like, oh, are there any single day tickets? Like, no, only weekend. And like Oshi Live were also there. Like, uh, by the way, uh, disclosure: I'm like associate with Oshi Live, so this isn't just a big ad. But um. Ocean Life brought some VTubers there on their own, not like part of like the, the huge Hollow Live guests they always get. See, it's funny because you barely mentioned VTuber in, in your talk, but like Anime Impulse has become the VTuber convention. <laughs> it is like that's all they really focus on. It seems like most of their money and time and effort and energy is spent getting that. What's the word I'm looking for? What's the polite word for the S word that I think Twitch doesn't like you saying any, anyway? Um, 
fan, hyper fan, I guess. Oh, um, okay, like, that word. The the okay for the record, just so nobody thinks I was saying something really terrible there. Like, is it simple? But yes. yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, the like they try to get that VTuber like hyper fan money because like uh like they have these meet and greets and whatever, and they sell they're like hundreds of dollars, and they those always sell out within like milliseconds. Um, and what's even weirder, in my opinion, is that like and. <sighs> maybe as an anime fan and everything be like but yeah you like to do panels the only reason you care about it there's no programming at these conventions technically they have stages and i'm sure that's where lotus used to perform like at a stage that was kind of just in the middle of the the, the, it's just like a giant exhibit hall Mm -hmm. that's my issue with these cons they they don't really feel like cons they feel like those kind of like i guess there's still conventions in the grand scheme of things as as far as like you know semantics go Mm -hmm. but like all the extra stuff that isn't in exhibit hall are not there. Like literally, there's no programming rooms. There's, I do, I do think they have had made cafes attached to them, but there's nothing. Usually, that that's not included. There's no like video rooms. There's no. Um, the main events just happen there. There's probably a few other things I'm forgetting that a con typically has that they don't. And they end early. There's no nighttime activities and stuff like that. So I've always thought that was weird because I remember like, once again, remember the reason that I brought that up is like, some of my friends at Oshi Live were like, oh, can we do a panel there? And they're like, oh, we don't do panels unless you pay us. <laughs> and I don't know if I should have said that. Like maybe that was some insider knowledge there. But apparently no out, one man. does, like no one does panels there. Like, isn't that weird? Like, unless you're like sponsored panels, but yeah. So yeah. anyway. um, But yeah, like, so... It, it it doesn't like and as somebody who like funny enough because we spent a big chunk of this this in this this podcast talking about it as somebody who's trying not to go back to like young manual buying figures and everything all over the place i don't really mm-hmm. spend much money at an exhibit hall so like unless there's like some lewd stickers or like a lewd docu mocker i just have to have oh. which i guess is still spending money like but other than that i i, I don't were there any nude stickers? <laughs> Actually, um, I got some decals that like were at a booth that a friend had, and uh, well, it wasn't really their booth. They were like they had their own stuff, and then next door were like friends and stuff that had all these decals there that they sold for like two bucks a pop. I could have gone way crazier than I was expecting, but I actually only bought about six of them. But I'm like, I'm so excited to add them. They were at, they said that they like just had a bunch of extra designs that they were just planning on getting rid of because they weren't going to have them anymore. Um, and it was so dope because you you have your regular people that were selling them for like $8 a pop. But like here, these guys had some pretty like decent, um, what's it called? Some pretty decent, uh, what's it called? Decals for cars and peakers and all that. Was it a lead? Yeah, yeah. Some were lewd. Some were hella lewd. Others were more like <laughs> fun and cute. Those are the ones I would want. <laughs> so um yeah no like that that was a really cool thing like i bought that because i know i'm gonna slap those things on my car and um i thought it was really not like that was really dope that there would happen to be some people that like had some really decent product that were selling them for like like i literally asked like did you say two or did you say ten and they said yes two two dollars two dollars each and i'm just kind of like damn like no joke no joke like i'm really excited to like put them on my car later but um yeah, no, like, I I think that in terms of if you want to go and, like, maybe find some, like, really interesting things, like, you probably pay for them for, like, not even remotely what expo prices would be. But don't get me wrong, there were still some people that had, um, there were still some people that had certain figures that were definitely going for, like, like, really high money. But, yeah. Um, it's but funny those are more I... far in between specialized ones. I wondered where Lotus Juice performed. Uh, I saw Lotus Juice a long time ago at AOD. Like, mm-hmm. it's a con in San Francisco that's gone now. Or it's in San Francisco. It's in San Jose, sorry. Um, I saw him at AOD. Oh, gosh, like 2015? It was a long time ago. Like, Heidi was still around. But, like, um, I wondered where Lotus Juice performed because I, I saw, like, Angie, friend of the ADJ, ADJ member Angie, posted about, like, you know, like, oh, I saw Lotus Juice. I'm like, what the hell? I did it because once again, thanks to like um, anime impulses, like emphasis on VTuberness, 
Yeah. I didn't know they had like okay, to be fair, it's all like they, they always get a huge amount of uh English voice actors too. Mm-hmm. So I never heard of them getting a Japanese guest before, so that blows my mind. <laughs> At least a music especially a music guest. I've never heard of that. Maybe they are stepping it up. Maybe they'll they'll actually use a room that's not a giant exhibit hall at the next convention. <laughs> I mean, if it's like there's a whole stadium area that they didn't use that like during WonderCon is used for the masquerade or yeah. during um, it was also used for like, I mean, technically this could have been just a normal panel, but because it was so popular, there was one um, WonderCon where they ha- used the stadium area to have a, a critical role panel. So, you know, you have Matthew Mercer there along with some of his regular um, guests and then a few of the extra like voice actors that like join in as well. So like something like that definitely gets really big. Um, And I feel that like they did have their stage area that's just present for everybody. There was like certain tickets that they sold that gave you like more of a front row seat that was like 25 bucks on top of a regular ticket, which again, not necessarily bad and allows you to like be a little bit more close but in terms of being able to see lotus juice technically so long as there was available floor space and there wasn't like somebody really like tall in front of you you were still yeah, able i'm at to, the front <laughs> yeah you're you're still able to um you were still able to watch the show without even necessarily having to have bought one of the tickets that they set aside for the limited seating but you know this just shows that the more that it grows they could potentially use that as leverage so that they can actually use the stadium area that is attached to the convention so that there you could actually see some like someone like Lotus Juice perform in a more like yeah. arena type setup than just that stage. Yeah, I think I saw a Talking Dead panel there ages ago, like 2014 or 20 or something like that. Um, I remember it was Chris Hard Chris Hardwork's the guy from Talking Dead, right? Yes. I can't remember, but like, yeah, yeah, it was Talking Dead then. Um, I just remember I just went there because I'm like, oh, Chris Hardwick, and then I was like, oh wait, this has nothing to do with him technically. You were but, a, uh, just a fan of Chris Hardwick. Okay, nobody knows this, but he used to have a band called Hard and Firm. Oh no, I knew that. The, and like, I fucking love their music, and I, I think Chris Hardwick's kind of funny on his own, but like. I thought it was a Chris Hardwick panel, but it wasn't. <laughs> and... <laughs> because like I remember like I remember like um the play the, the room didn't fill up. Like it, it's a huge place, but the room didn't fill up. I think because it was like an off day or something like that. But I remember going up like, oh, what's this for? It's a Chris Hardwick panel. I'm like, oh fuck yeah. And I just waited in the line. Didn't wait very long, waited like an hour to get in. Then the thing starts. I'm like, what, what what's talking dead? And I, up to this point this point, I had not watched The Walking Dead yet. Like, I was one of those, like, hipsters who's like, I don't want to watch The Walking Dead. I actually grew to like the first few seasons like everyone did, but I didn't know that yet. But like, I remember going there, I'm like, what the hell is this? But I also assumed that the con didn't use those, any of the panel rooms, because, like, that convention center's three stories. And stories two and three have rooms. And I just assumed those are empty. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, there wasn't, the only times that the uh, stereos were being used were more so for cosplay, but genuinely based on the programming that they had available before the event occurred, it looked like everything was just specifically happening on the stage areas in yeah. the um in the uh, mainly for anime impulse and then the uh K Play Fest. So they had different things on those particular stages during the days, but um it, yeah they didn't really utilize Did they the have any K-pop groups above. Uh, I don't believe they had any K-pop groups, but they did have individual groups that would use the dance area mm. or that, that stage oh, in yeah. the K-Play Fest area for I performances. My, I think my homies, the corp, the Corpse Dance Group, they, crew, they did a... It's funny because I think I'm pretty sure it's core dance crew, but I, whenever I hear one of my, yeah. my friends pronounce it, she just called it corpse. But like the, the core da- the core. core dance crew. Core. <laughs> The core dra- dance crew, like, uh, yeah, one of my friends is, uh, is, well, a couple of my friends are in there, but yeah, I think I remember seeing her post that there were, she was performing there this weekend. I'm like, oh, I thought it, I'm pretty sure knowing them to do a lot of K-pop stuff, it was probably, like, they probably were on the K-Play stage. Yeah, I think it was, like, that, Asayuru and um, Hamu Cotton, I think. Um, oh, so there were actually a decent all... amount of people there, okay. Yeah, uh, so like it, it was pretty, so pretty cool. We we didn't necessarily see performances just because everywhere that we were walking around was checking out more of the booths or stuff like that. And then later we ran into other friends like um, 
Rebecca that uh, my girlfriend takes uh, pictures with, and then also mm. uh, what's it called, Weeaboo Wonderland that we even saw with one of the. Mm. Um, uh, it wasn't active at the time, but they had the little um, what's it called, the little robots that normally would have the VTuber or something. You didn't see Ocean Live then, because they had the robots too. <laughs> <laughs> uh no well we didn't see ocean live but like to be oh, fair sure. yeah <laughs> uh to be fair like my girlfriend and i aren't like the biggest like um vtuber friends fans or we don't necessarily follow like anyone in particular like the only person i know about only because uh some of their music's all right on both spotify and apple music would just mm-hmm. be like maury kappa calliope something well, yeah. Oh, we <laughs> Kappa. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But no, it's funny because um, back when we Ocean oh, Life first started, we got like our first robot. Then eventually got two. Um, yeah. It was like so cool. Like it's like, oh look, there's nobody. Like we're so cool. We have all these robots. Now everyone has fucking robots. Like we made the like I, I didn't go this year, but at Ocean, not Ocean. I keep saying Ocean Life at um, Off Kai Expo, there were like ten robots, like all doing the same thing, and I'm like. I wonder if everyone had the same idea at once or they're ripping off Oshi Live. Because I know a couple of them did just rip off Oshi Live, but mm. I don't know. But anyway, um, fuck, what was I going to say? It's what VTubers uh, thing. Manual? Yes, it I is... know we're going to wrap it up. I want to say something okay. first, huh? Okay, no, that's all I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> now, now you may forget even more. What does it matter? I'll remember later. Oshi Live, convention, concert. Did you see Ivan? Oh. Ivan was there as to J. <laughs> He he took photos, I assume. You should have got some uh, photos to this get into the art gallery. The, the A to J be like the phantom troop of anime events. We just have a revolving <laughs> door of members and it is big, vast. Hey, and yeah. And catches people by surprise sometimes. Hey, hey, none of us have tattoos to show what number we are. <laughs> I, I, I mainly, it's funny because like I only, because I, I even just sent me the the dropbox with like the the stuff he took but i i keep forgetting that's usually how i know the anime impulse impulses happen because i get everyone's emails sent to me too and i'll see his requests and his approvals for like press and anime impulse and i'm like oh it's happening again <laughs> one of these days i'll go back i don't know just always like i'd, I'd say nope. check out the i'd say go the... for the anaheim one I mean, if I, I kind of wish I knew Lotus Juice was there, I probably could have like took a few pictures, wrote about it, maybe try to get an interview. But like, I didn't even know. I, I just thought it was going to be like the same old, you know, local well, people. Uh, I think he had just a normal panel on Saturday. His performance was on Sunday. Oh, that makes sense too with the posts I saw. I don't know. There was a lot of cons this weekend. It was also Sabo- Sabotin Con in, in Arizona. Arizona. Mm-hmm. There was. Uh... Yeah, Back I forget that there was. Oh, Sack Anime. Yeah, I forgot. Sack Anime Summer. They had like a yeah. bunch of Disney people there. Uh, course, they always have Disney people there. I'd be surprised every time Jeff Cummings isn't there. I know. Fucking. It's funny because ever since I made that joke that they always have Charles Martinet, like, because they did for a while. He, they haven't had him since. He hasn't been there like in a year and a half since they. Maybe since like maybe it was a Nintendo connection because ever since he stopped doing Mario, maybe he maybe it's his own conscious decision. Ever since he stopped doing Mario, he hasn't really been there. And I'm like, he's still cool. Bring him back. <laughs> but yeah. Anyways, I guess we'll wrap it up there. Yeah, don't uh, don't go crazy buying everything, and maybe give Impulse a chance. I guess I don't know. I, it, I'm it, still. I, I I feel that for what they have, the tickets were a great value, and I mean there is more to do. Like if you're really big into K-pop, I mean there is an outlet there for you. Even though I know that's like coming maybe a month after the uh, K. I'm not sure if it was called K-Con, K-Con or so. Yeah. Um, uh, but like, you know, it's it's different things at different times uh, for peeps. And um, I feel that it's not necessarily trying to just cater to everybody to have them there. I've been to cons that generally don't give the effort to like cater to like, you know, when they're not trying to cater to every, to any base, they're trying to cater to like 
everyone yeah. and you can just tell that there's like an air of insincerity and it's like the only people there that probably have any passion are probably in the artist alley and this didn't feel like that though i will give them credit for having a relatively big artist alley which mainly in the anime impulse and in the k best play or k play fest spots but um even including like the sneaker expo uh, this feels way different than when you would normally just have separate buildings for everything like yeah. they do at Pomona. Like it's surprising how well they like blend together. And I feel that if they can like keep approaching it the way that they did, if they're able to increase the um, type of um, guests that they have, I feel like maybe their guests by comparison to what they had during impulse in pomona it was less guests because the yeah. building they had for them this year was insane <laughs> over there like they literally i i think the where they used to have like the chinese gambling um the chinese gambling like booth thing over there it was just not there anymore it literally was just the guest booth for everyone that they had at anime impulse so um I, don't know, I, I feel that it was a good balance between everything, and I do believe that it's <laughs> worth it's worth you going to check out. I mean, like, if there's anyone who would be like getting an interview of Lotus Juice that could pull it off, I know it's you, especially just because, like, I don't I don't think you would have to fight or do too much if you want to. Do I that. know, <laughs> and then by random chance, Ivan was already there and Angie was there. It was like meant to be, and I just was not there. I'm like, Angie, come with me. Like, Ivan, you too. Let's go. Yeah, I, I'd say I say <laughs> it could have happened. Up, uh, try out the OC one next year. I'd say um I say go for it. Definitely oh yeah, I'm not going it. to Pomona. I hate I hate that they call that LA. It's like this is the LA one. I'm like Pomona is not. I mean it is, but Pomona is not LA. It's so much for it's so. They're, far they're both they're both about a two and a half hour drive, and I'm just saying in my book, I know they're not going to move it from Pomona. Something about going to like Ontario area, I am not. Yeah. Because the, the only there. thing, the only reason I'd ever go there was just for the Ontario Convention Center for. Uh, anime Los Angeles. Uh, I think Chibi is a really good separate one if you still enjoy that convention spot. Um, and me and um, Hannah, my girlfriend, are gonna go to the uh, what's it called? We're gonna go to Anime Apex Chibi, and um, that's like the only place I really want to go. I'm not the biggest fan of the Pomona, um, the Pomona Fairgrounds. I can understand if they're nostalgic because they consistently had it there. <laughs> but um, if I had to choose between the two, I'm just kind of like, hey, you guys already did really good. You guys do really good at the OC one. Uh, I, I why don't you just like go? I mean, if you have the numbers, you could like you could you could go. But I I understand it's like partially also a festival thing that like adds to it. Uh, and before we close, I want to point out that, like, your girlfriend points out that she is not a big fan of K-pop, which confused, which I thought she was, and I'm just, I'm just totally confused. Okay, I should clarify. She is a really big fan of BTS, Twice, and oh, predominantly okay. Bias being uh, Rap Monster or Real Me. Namjoon oh my god! Okay, you can't call him. Okay, I only know this because I always make fun of Leslie about this. He doesn't go by Rap Monster anymore. It's RM. And this is true, by the way. He goes, it, it doesn't mean anything anymore, but I always call him Rap Monster anyway, and it gets her really mad. <laughs> She's like, it's not Rap Monster. I don't know if your girlfriend's like that too, I but think, he doesn't. No, it's it's fine doesn't... if you at least break down like the, the transition of it. You know, it's like. RM. Yeah, he's not Rap Monster, <laughs> which, is, which is hilarious. Who would call themselves Rap Monster? <laughs> Anyways, what is this? You can't call. See, there goes. See, she, your girlfriend even said you can't call him Rap Monster. The the fandoms, the, the fandoms, the the fans will will leap down your throat if you do that. I, I know it's, this from first hand experience. Real. I did say real me though. Like that's the that's the other thing for RM. It's 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 now also real me. I only know it because, like I said, like I have I have some friends who are really in, into BTS and like. Uh, I just when I real when somebody mentioned oh I think somebody told me that way like oh my favorite member is RM and I'm like oh okay it's like yeah blah 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 they used to do this 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 and they also used to go by Rap Monster but they don't anymore and they should never have told me that because as soon as I heard Rap Monster I'm like that's all I'm calling them from now on. <laughs> okay, Manuel, and, uh, we're wrapping up. And also a fan of oh twice. yeah, let's let's wrap up. Let's be the real Rap Monsters with the W though. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>
Yeah, W. <laughs> so yeah, we'll uh, wrap it up there. Uh, we'll, we'll be on next Tuesday. Uh, probably have a more solid topic. Even though this turned into a solid topic, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I didn't think this would. But yeah, maybe next week we'll have a more pre-planned solid topic. And then tomorrow's Breath of Fire 3. And then uh, there's no drink talk roll this week. But oh. We'll be back next week. Oh, well, real quick. Real quick. Um, so I've gone through some lists because everybody is still believing that we're gonna get a uh well there's like two three the two sequels that we're going now it's snk versus sorry capcom versus smk3 is what a lot of people want after the recent collection mm -hmm. as well as marvel versus capcom 4 um don't add for infinite just just that's what people are trying to call it they're, they're just trying to skim over infinite um so for capcom versus um what's it called smk uh cap Capcom, more like Capcom versus Marvel. Marvel versus Capcom, more like Marvel versus Capcom. Though they could still show up in the SNK versus also. Um, it's just believe Capcom will be headlining both. But because you mentioned Breath of Fire, uh, a lot of people are bringing up primarily Breath of Fire Four. So there's like three characters from that game that they bring up. They either bring up the blue-haired protagonist. I'm not a big Breath of oh, Fire. Not, his name's always Ryu, but yeah. So keep going. All, all, always, but that version of Ryu that like, comes up. There's this girl. I forget her name. I'm sure, I'm not sure if it starts with a K or something like that. Um, but they bring her up, and then the other is the antagonist, like kind of rival, oh. but then turns antagonist of the game, the summoner person with the white hair. They also oh, show up. He, he's my favorite. He's the Chinese one. Fo Lu. Of, course, of course I had to bring that up. But yeah, Fo Lu, he's the... Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> there's like there's a lot of top, top 10 lists. Not top, not top 10s. They're not doing top 10s. Everyone's doing this build your own roster thing. So the build your own roster has like 60 characters, 30 Marvel, 30... Um, Capcom and mm -hmm. a lot of them keep on debating if whether or not they want to add Ryu from that game, but then they're like, nah, because I'll get confusing because we have Ryu from Street Fighter. And so then they go, uh, so they bring up that character, um, Fulu, was it? Yeah, um, well, well, Fulu, but yeah, Fu Fulu is technically correct too. Yeah, so they, they bring up that character or they bring up this other girl that's part of the exact same one, but the, they bring up Breath of Fire for. As like I never thought thing. about that. Whenever I, I never think about them, even though they are Capcom, Capcom throughout, I never thought about including them in, in, a, in one of these games. But yeah, All right. I, I would love to see Fuller. He has he has a really cool theme that's very Chinese inspired. Mm. Well, um, it, I remember like I, it was one of my it was one of my sayings amongst me and my friends when I was playing that game when I was really young. What would yeah. Fuller do? Because I thought that rhymed, and it, it just instead of like what would Jesus do, what would Fuller do? And <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna name the episode that JD if JD doesn't get to it first. Oh, man, I already <laughs> put the title in chat. I, I know gonna... I saw you. I saw you. The impulse. We have no impulse control. But yeah, so that's it. See you next. See you, see you tomorrow and next Friday. And Shout next out to our Tuesday patron Ed for supporting us. Support us on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Pay, yes. Uh, Patreon. Give us money so it, give us money so that the, the the big bill that's coming up isn't so hard on me, like the A to J bill. If not, it's cool. But you know, I'm not trying to turn a DSP here. But yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you can give us some money, it's cool. If not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna eBay. <laughs> but let's move on. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.